Welcome back to part three of the Vimarana Puppy. I hope you're enjoying these uh, series. These are um, pieces that I've done as full tutorials and, and um, just sort of bringing them to YouTube and, and kind of giving you a, a bit of an idea of how, how to draw um, animals like this realistically. So we're on to part three. We're looking at the face uh, and the top of the head. Again, I'm using a few of the different brands of pencils. I find the Derwent Lightfast, so this is the Lightfast I'm using here. I think it's either the Taupe or the Mars, but it's the Taupe, um, <laughs> you can see there. Uh, the Taupe is a really fabulous colour for this breed of dog. It's sort of violety, um, but not crazy purple violet -y, if you see what I mean. It's a really, really super colour. If you don't have the full sets of your uh, pencils, getting um, just singles of, of the different brands, I think is a really good idea. And actually, I do have a, uh, a core pencil list with all of the pencils I use for animal um, art. I do have those uh, to download for free uh, if you want them from my website. Um, this particular colour, I find uh, really, really useful for the that Vimarana colour, which is sort of like it's pinky. It's, I think I talked about this in the other videos. It's it's a very strange colour, and then you can mix it with the the sort of the more bluey colours and the pinky colours as well. So you sort of get a a lovely uh, variance of tone in the piece. Now, when I first start to work on animal fur, like I've done with the, you know, when I was doing the, the nose area and around the eye, I start with very, very light pressure. Um, I tend to look through the details, so I tend not to kind of concentrate on the details to begin with, but more of the, the texture of the fur that I'm drawing. Um, and then I kind of build up a little bit on the tonal value. So I want to bring in all of the little tiny uh, nuances within the animal's fur and this is a really good example here actually where I'm drawing the side of the face of all of this, the very very um, subtle changes in uh, the variance in tone and what that gives you is it gives you a really good idea of the form of the animal and how it's working underneath so again you can see I'm using quite a few different brands of pencil here I've got the polychromos dark indigo um, I use that an awful lot on my brown animals and, and actually on the Vimarana here where I'm incorporating it in with the taupe and those more sort of uh, pinky colours, The that dark indigo works incredibly well. Um, using the the Caran d'Ache Pablos, you saw the, I think it was the steel grey that I had there, um, to just soften everything. We're working on the pastel matte board, so there is an awful lot of tooth. So the darker colours, when you put those down, they can end up looking quite grainy. So I'll put my darker colour in, and then I might come in with a lighter colour over the top in the early stages just to soften those out slightly. Um, and I'm also using, I think, the violet brown and the sepia 50% from the luminance range. Again, really, really great colours for this type of animal and really great colours as well for sort of more orangey animals that you can use in there, um, in the shadows and everything like that. So starting with very light pressure and just building the, um, you know, the fur texture up and then working in over the top just to sort of smooth out and then you bring the the darker colors back in uh you know it's all about working those tonal values in working the colors in so when you're talking about fur you know i like to think of it as you know the there's there are layers of fur you know you have the tonal values you have the colors you then have the the details and it's exactly the same with pencil work if you sort of try to think of it as uh you know layering up um to get to the point where you can bring your details in i think is a really good way of thinking about it tonal values i think are the most important part now the top of the head here i had quite a lot of fun here because it didn't take very long because i just left it really nice and light so a lot of these lost edges uh right on the top of the head where the color just sort of fades off um you know works very 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 nicely and then combined with much darker tones so you can see I brought these little sort of soft wrinkles in. I've used the, the dark indigo in there and then softened it off again with sort of some quite light colours. I think I've got the, uh, I think this is the Arctic that I'm using here um, just to sort of, again, soften out. I find the the uh, the light fast, the Derwent light fast pencils, the, the lighter coloured ones are really, really nice for almost burnishing, you know, just softening everything off so you've got a lovely soft finish. Um, and again, with the head, 
we talk about pastel matte. I think I talked about in the last uh, the last um, part of this one that we really don't need hundreds of layers. I mean, that's pretty much the top of the head of this little dog done. How many layers is that? Probably one in in places. Maybe not even any in some in some cases. Um, you know, you really don't need to put hundreds of hundreds of layers in if you use your pencils um, cleverly. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I, I tend to use different brands of pencils is because they have a different quality when they lay down on the paper. So some of them might be, uh, you know, very opaque and have an awful lot of saturation. So when you put the pencil down, there's an awful lot of colour there. Um, some of them might be much more uh, subtle in colour. They might be harder, so you might not get as much colour down. Um, and some of them might have a really lovely sort of uh, velvety quality to them, particularly the the, the Pablos that are really, really going to help to, again, soften and blend some of those harsher colours that you put down. So uh, layering is important. Layering is really important because it means that you can build up the, the structure of the animal that you're drawing. It means that you can build up the depth of the animal that you can draw, that you're drawing. But um, it also means that you can bring in different sort of brands of pencil or different techniques to really help you get the the I guess it's the feeling of the fur. That's what's really important for me. Um, pressure again is a vital component component for uh, for coloured pencil work. Being able to really temper your pressure. I think is is so important you know being able to kind of have your pencil on the page and be able to use really really soft pressure and then go into medium pressure go into hard pressure back to soft pressure it means that you're going to be able to get those lovely soft edges uh you know and and be able to kind of bring in darker tones where you need to and then have everything a little bit softer where you need to so i'm using the the arctic light fast here in over the top of those sort of purpley colors uh, just to soften everything back a little bit so it's going to kind of sm smear it if you like blend it make it all a little bit softer uh, that's what we're wanting to see we don't really want to see any pencil marks in there uh, particularly it all wants to be you know just just look like fur and if it's soft fur that's what we want it to look like we want it to look like lovely soft fur um you know as well as sort of some of the the more harsher areas of fur as well with color pencil you do tend to work from light to dark it's much easier to get your darker colors in over the top of the lights but you can still use your lights in over the top of the darks so using pastel map it does work very nicely and it means that you can kind of bring in some sort of quite nice highlights in over the top of the darks you're never going to get a bright 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 white you know um well, you, you can, but it is quite challenging. With pastel matte, it's much easier to be able to do that. Um, but again, you know, starting off with your lighter colours first and building up, it's about, like I said before, looking through the details, looking through the colours that you're, um, you know, you're looking at to try and figure out what colours are underneath there. Now, when I'm choosing my colours, I don't match a pencil to the fur, um, you know, and it, uh, I had a comment today about you know well I, I you know I'm used to kind of mixing colors and color pencil is different I kind of just have to match the color that the fur is um, and you can do if you want to do but with me I mix my colors so I will mix my colors exactly the same as somebody who is doing an oil painting or a, a watercolor painting I will find a, a, a range of colors that are going to work really nicely and I'll layer them together to create the color that I want so I wouldn't pick a pencil um, for a colour. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get a, a pencil colour that is the absolute perfect match to what you're trying to do and that's like one of those moments where it's like amazing. Um, you know, but the majority of the time you end up mixing your pencils to create that, um, you know, the colour that you're wanting. Again, pastel matte, great for uh, erasing mistakes when you're using the Scotch Magic Tape there. I've just taken out a lump that I wasn't happy with and then you can kind of just go in over the top and, and replace it. Um, you know, quick and easy, works really, really well. Uh, so yeah, so this is part three. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've got a little bit of an insight into there as to how I create things. And then I will be back very shortly with, um, with part four. And if you want to draw this particular one um he is over on patreon i think on the 10 
10 pound tier um the whole thing um you know so um thanks for watching Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video and I really hope you found it useful and have learnt something new. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button below and if you'd like to find more tutorials filmed in real time with loads of detail and full step-by-step -step instructions, you can join my Patreon for just £5 a month. You can find a link for this in the description below. I hope to see you again soon.